Hello there, boars and sows, or male moles and female moles. Today we're going to be referring to the King Mole Handbook on how to use pesticides. This is our first training video, so from this point on, you are pups, and you will eventually grow into fully grown boars and sows, or male moles and female moles. Um, just a quick disclaimer, this video does not substitute for the specific label of any product which should be read and strictly followed at all times as per to the rule that the label is the law. So first our technician puts on safety glasses and reads the label of the pesticide making sure that he or she has the right idea in his or her head on how to use the pesticide. Then he or she will look at the label and make sure that their diagnosed pest is on the label. Then our technician will screw on the lid tightly and thoroughly shake the bottle. The technician will then put on gloves and unscrew the lid of the bottle. The technician will then pour a little bit of the pesticide itself into the cap. Since this pesticide requires about two and a half ounces per 2.5 gallons, our technician will make sure that he or she precisely mixes it. That will start with he or she sucking out a little bit of stuff from the cap with a syringe, then putting it into the measuring cup. The technician will then proceed to put on both gloves and pour in about one ounce of the herbicide. The herbicide in this demonstration is Bonai, Chickweed, Clover, and Oxalis Killer. Although this video may be a tutorial on how to use pesticides, it is not a substitute to read the specific proper label of the product. And the PPE that the technician is wearing in this video is what is recommended by the label. The technician then unscrews the lid on the water jug and pours in water to the measuring cup until it is about one quart. Then he or she will then unscrew the lid on the sprayer and set it down off to the side. Then the water will be added. Be careful when adding the water and any other sort of pesticide as an eruption of liquid can cause an inconsistent flow. The technician will then pour the concentrate into the sprayer tank. The technician will then fill up the measuring cup to about 28 ounces to rinse it out. Then he or she will pour it upside down, let it sit for about 10 seconds, shake it, then take it out. The cup has been cleaned enough so that it can be used with another pesticide. Then the technician will pour in the rest of the water. A note about the measuring cups. Due to certain pesticide incompatibilities, aka some of them creating toxic byproducts that will do more harm than good when mixed together, you should always make sure that you A, replace your measuring cups after every use, or B, segregate your measuring cups per chemical type or per incompatible chemical.
Then pour, if possible, pour in the entire amount of the container and then pour it back in to make sure that you have knowledge of the exact amount of pesticide that you have. You don't have to do this, but it's just a way to inventory what you have. In this demonstration, our technician has about five fluid ounces left. He or she then screws on the lid onto the container, sets the jug aside, and then screws the lid onto the sprayer. Then he or she shakes the sprayer. Once all of the mixing has been completed, it is imperative that when you are spraying chemicals of this exact strength, that you post a warning sign so that other people do not enter. This chemical is particularly hazardous when it gets your skin due to its high corrosivity. We're going to put a time lapse on of our technician spraying the pesticide. To the fire, but it's no use Cause you can't stop it from shining through It's true, baby, the As you can see, our technician is making sure that a thorough mist covers the foliage of the pest. In this demonstration, the targeted pest is poison ivy. Into the night, I raise my hand to the fire, but it's no use, cause you can't stop it from shining through, it's true, baby let the light. This is not the same pesticide container used in the mixing thing. But once you are finished with your pesticide container, it is crucial that you always wash it out the correct way. We will start by unscrewing the lid and making sure that it's empty on top of a non-absorbent surface like a tray. Then our technician will use a knife to make sure that all of the foil on the lid has been removed or pulled back. The technician will then add water about one pint into the container. Then set it off to the side. You then screw the lid back on Make sure it's pressed down tightly.
and then shake for about 30 seconds. Once that step has been completed, you can empty out the rinseate into a sprayer or a container, then haul it off to your local hazardous materials disposal facility. Then it is imperative that you cut little bits of holes and stab into the pesticide container, being thorough that you are not going to get poked or sliced with the knife being used. The knife being used should not be used for anything else other than pesticide container destruction or opening of foil lids and dry packages. As you can see, our technician is making sure that the container has all the holes in it it needs. We hope you found this informative. See you next time.